Welcome to Pro Amp Solutions. So what we have here today is a Marshall uh, DSL 100 watt um, amplifier and I have the main board uh, out of this particular unit. It came in with a particularly a high noise floor. So I have uh, completed uh, the recap of this board. But what I wanted to talk through today uh, was specifically how to solve uh, the bias drift on this with a fairly easy uh, simple solution. So the root cause of the bias drift has to do so I've done just a little bit of prep so I wanted to talk through that because uh, there's basically what I would consider uh, three prep steps and then just really simple execution. So the first prep step would to be remove uh, all four of the 5.6K um, grid resistors to the power tubes. So there's one there that's been removed, one there removed, one there removed, and one there removed. So those are just clipped out. So what I want to show is where the conductivity on the board uh, is to those. So from this lead jumper here, this would be on the left-hand side. It is conducting there and conducting there, but not here and not here. This lead on the right, this jumper, is connecting here and here. So if I turn the board over, uh, we can look at the root cause where that trace route is. Let me do that real quick. So, if this right here is the underside, let me move up here so we can see the underside of the board, and you can see I've got a mark for a cut there. But this particular trace right here runs right next to a high voltage to the power tubes, and eventually some conductivity uh, develops there, and that's what causes the bias drift. So what we're going to do is we're going to make four very small trace cuts as uh, step prep step two. So prep step one was just clipping out the four 5.6K resistors. Prep step two is going to be three cuts right here, here, and here on uh, the bottom side of the board. And then one cut uh, on the top side right between these two uh, jumpers. And what that will do uh, is that will take out of circuit uh, the problematic trace completely. So I'm going to uh, cut those traces, we'll regroup, do the test there, and then we'll move on to the third prep step, which will be using a five millimeter hole saw, and we're just going to remove the material. I've already lit, removed the solder, around uh, pin 5 from the power tubes. So we're going to take a either a Dremel tool will work or a hole saw and we're going to uh, clear those out. Then it's just a matter of uh, putting 5.6K resistors uh, off of pin 5 and re-establishing uh, those connections. And um, I've installed um, the some kits uh, that you know, in other DSLs and TSLs that facilitate this process and make it fairly convenient. But um, in my opinion, uh, you have to go through some of the similar steps. You still have to solder onto pins five. You still have to drill this out. So why not just cut a couple of uh, traces and and repopulate uh, this line uh, like it needs to be. So. Uh, that's what we're going to do today. Shouldn't take too long. So the first step, I'm going to get my Dremel tool out. We're going to cut those four uh, locations on the traces and we'll come back and test that. Okay, welcome back. Uh, so I have uh, made the, uh, let me get to refocus here so you can see good. I made the uh, cut in this trace and then on the back side. We've got the um, trim right here, and then uh, two, one on this side, and one there. So we'll flip it over here, and we'll look at this uh, together. So 
there's my meter so the left jumper now has no connectivity there and no connectivity there you know really nothing all the way across then the right side no longer has connectivity here and no longer has connectivity here so the next step we're going to do is I'm going to take my uh, five uh, millimeter hole saw and I'm going to clear the area uh, carefully around these pins and I'll come back and show you what that looks like be back shortly okay welcome back so uh, I am back and I've got uh, these uh, holes cleared out so you can see uh, each one here uh, I used the five millimeter a hole saw so we have the original traces uh, that were coming from the 5.6k resistor uh, to the grids are all cleared out so now uh, all of the trace that was uh, problematic uh, is out of circuit and what we're going to do here we're going to raise a 5.6k and a 5.6k and we're going to connect from this jumper to the 5.6k, 5.6k, and come here. Then on this side, we're going to raise a 5.6k and a 5.6k. Come from this one to this one to this point and over to the jumper. And we will have that uh, circuit recompleted in a way uh, that there will no longer be any possibility for bias drift. So the next thing I'm going to do uh, is wire this up. Uh, with the solution in place and then we'll look at that together okay welcome back wanted to show the interim step before I started wiring so I've got all four 5.6 K resistors mounted to the lugs and I'll show you up here close so what I do is I wrap this lead around uh, the small diameter of a jeweler screwdriver um, to uh, create a coil that I slide over the pin to make a really good uh, mechanical connection on each one of those so there they are free and clear ready to go and then uh, I'll do the the wiring next and we'll come back and look at the finished product Hey, welcome back to Pro-Amp Solutions. I wanted to take you through uh, the completed um, <clears throat> solution for the bias drift. Uh, so I finished the wiring here. So I did it in red and yellow to delineate the sides. So I'm coming uh, up here. This is actually a single piece of 22 gauge Teflon stranded wire uh, so that the heat from the iron doesn't uh, wreak havoc so these are uh, J hooked over uh, that insulation that I took off there so this is a single piece of 22 gauge uh, we're connected in through the hole uh, here where the resistor was and then we come across and tie into these uh, two and down to the jumper on the left side then on this side uh, similar we come from the two uh, 56k resistors and then I stranded these together and J hooked over the resistor uh, one comes down to where we pick up the bias and then the other one goes over uh, where it connects to the junction of the coupling capacitor uh, out of the phase inverter so this is a very elegant uh, solution to the bias drift it'll never happen again on this amp hi this is John welcome back to Pro Amp Solutions I've got the main board uh, installed and I have just powered it up uh, not the standby just the low voltage and let's test these four power tube grid resistors let's check the negative bias there we go negative 46 and a half on that one negative 46 and a half on that one negative 46 and a half on that one and here is the last one okay 
So uh, the new bias solution is working uh, perfectly. So I will turn this over and um, uh, finish biasing the power tubes correctly. And uh, I'm excited about uh, this for on behalf of the customer. So that is the solution to the bias drift in this amp. Uh, fairly easy implementation without having to uh, buy any third-party kits.